you explain to the court, if you talk about an accident, what is it that you mean by that? Um, I mean the situation, the, the situation as a whole wasn't, wasn't meant to be. Okay, welcome to episode two. In this episode, we're going to be talking about and, um, motive. When it comes to motive, one's got to ask, um, what is the most likely scenario given all the information? And usually, a motive, well, motive is, is often silly. Uh, it's not necessarily rocket science. Um, I didn't sort of go into the the research with a, 
how can I put it with a, I guess with a premeditated idea of what exactly was happening. I, you know, I built it up all along. I, I've got to say I did have a, a gut feel, which has sort of uh, been reinforced with information that I've, I've gotten. Yeah. So you, you, so bottom line is, a, you, you did a lot of research. You spoke to a lot of people, and you came up with this narrative that you say this probably happened that night. So in, in short, what happened? on the 13th of February 2013 that led to that morning's killing uh, at 3 o'clock on the 14th. What happened, Nick? Okay, well, I've got to give a disclaimer to that, that I'm saying this as my, as a, as a, as a view, as a sort of subjective view. I'm not saying this as facts, right? Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yeah, got it. Okay, okay so um, if you put yourself in Oscar's shoes, um, he's always been very uh, sort of, upset when when his brand has come into question so for example if anyone questions the fairness of him competing that sort of thing uh -huh. um so yeah so if you, if you take that psychology into this into the scene and there is now it's the, the 13th 14th and he's arguing with his his, his girlfriend uh, it's valentine's day that's what, the scenario what are they arguing about well, they're really arguing about, um, I guess, his career. You know, uh, how is she going to be involved in his career? Um, how is she going to be kind of supporting his brand? Uh, how is she is she going to be joining him overseas or not? And I think what he didn't expect with her was that you know, Reva's quite a someone with her, her own um, quite a self possessed woman. Uh, someone with their own sort of game plan, someone with their own own dreams and their own, own ambitions. And, and I think he didn't expect her to turn him down in that sense. I think she loved him, wanted to be in a relationship with, with him, but, but didn't want to okay. sort of be his sidekick. Now, and, now, and I think... To interrupt you for, for a second, the way I understand it yeah. is she was in a relationship before, a sort of a long-distance relationship, That's where, right, yeah. where her former partner wasn't present. And she was thinking, if he travels overseas... For six months, I'm going to be without a, a partner. And she was weighing this up and saying, uh, is this a relationship I want to be in? And we're speculating, obviously. Well, if that's true, but I think the, 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 the what cuts sort of closer to the bone is the fact that Oscar, um, you know, he, uh, he wanted to take the next step in his narrative in terms of the Oscar brand. You know, he, he sort of conquered the London Olympics and now it's, it's the next step. And... I think some of it was validation. He wanted to be validated as a man. I think he, he wanted to be, um, you know, and I think a lot of it is, some of it is a branding thing and some of it is the personal thing. You know, you also want to be in a relationship. You wanted to travel. You know, it's, it's a long period traveling with other people. So, uh, sorry, with, with, without other people. And, and uh, he clearly said that, um, you know, in terms of when Samantha Taylor didn't join him, he didn't even want to go to London. So... So that gives an idea how important it was to have a companion. And uh, so on Valentine's yeah. Day, and you're speculating yeah. about this, and we'll hear what Pete has to say about this. But you're speculating on Valentine's Day. She says to him, "I'm not going to be travelling with you for the next six months. I'm going to be focusing on my career, number one." And then you're saying she also then probably told him it's over on Valentine's Day. I don't think uh, I don't think it really happened that way. I think. She told him she wasn't going to be um, sort of helping him with his brand. You know, that's actually a very important point to just take on its own is, you know, Oscar saw her in a, in a big way as a brand uh, companion or someone that was going to reinforce his brand, someone who would, would tweet uh, his name if he went somewhere and so on, you know, and, and sort of be, be at his arm in, in interviews and that sort of thing. And I think she was. She went to a meeting that same day, the thirteenth. She went to capacity relations, and you know, they have said in it's on it's a, it's a matter of public record that they've said they didn't think Oscar was good for her brand. And I mean, I think that that was just a shocker for him. But but I'm going to interrupt you because in the book you specifically write that she not only told him that day, "I'm not going to be part of your career," but that she told him it's over. It's in your book. Well, I think. Uh, Look, it started like that. I think it started with, with her saying she's not going to be involved and, and he really reacted. And, and, and that led to a, 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 an argument which got worse and worse and worse. So, so I don't think she that day expected to, to break up with him or even want to break up with him. But I think his reaction was to such an extent. And, and I mean, the, the, 
the resurrection is about the the motive mostly. Re revelation is really about what actually happened, like what actually happened no, at night. I tell you what, let's let's get back to you uh, other side at oh. eight o'clock because I want I would love to hear your ideas about motive specifically, right? Okay. The complimentary breakfast. <laughs> So, do you notice what's happening in the interview is uh, Brian van Heerden is trying to get me to explain the motive and uh, what he's actually asking me is the trigger and in fact between the two sections, the, the two um, clips if you, if you will of the interview, um, I got an, an email from um, from the producer saying, "Can you can you wrap it up? Can can you just say what the motive was?" And at that point, I realised, um, you know, the motive is quite a long spiel. But what they really wanted was the trigger. They wanted the moment that the the crime took place. What was the event that triggered it? And uh, and then I thought, well, you know, it's you know, there's the slow burn, and then there was there was that moment, and and and, uh, and then I, I just quickly addressed that for. The This morning, it's always nice to see Piet Beiderveld, uh, even Peter Swiss Dies Beer, there in Nederland. Like, I'll be here to see Piet. No, I don't give you for that. Beer in Nederland, okay. No, no. The reason why Piet is here, you know, I, I have a lot of faith in his opinion, and he's been following the Oscar Pistorius trial. Now, there's this book going around called Resurrection by Nick van der Bleek, in which he points out a few things, and he says this is what I think probably happened, and it sort of boils down to uh, Oscar wanted Riva to be part of his career. She wanted to follow her own career path. This led to an argument, the argument got hectic and eventually she said, listen, I don't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. And this on Valentine's Day and, well, you know the rest. So I'll be lying for and Nick van der So did I suspect when uh, Rian van Heerden um, invited me on his morning breakfast show, this is a show that plays out to a, a very large audience in Gauteng. Did I know, did I suspect that I was being set up? Sure, I suspected it, but I thought I knew my game and I thought I could sort of make the most of it. And um, and uh, I think in the end it, it, it played off pretty well. He wrote this book, Resurrection. Hello, Nick. Hey, how's it? I'm all right. Listen, I'm, I was just talking to Pete. He's got a few questions for you. Okay. Brigadier. Firstly, Nick, I'd love to know, uh, where did you get this, uh, how did you jump this, to these conclusions about... Sorry, I can't really hear Pete. You can hear me now. No, you uh, like very uh, soft. Uh, Pete, Pete says he just wants to know how you, uh, you. He said you jumped to these conclusions. He said based on what? On what? Yeah, on what basis? On what basis? Uh, okay. Um, I think uh, it's probably better if, if if we sort of move right to the door. Uh, that's the that's the trigger event. Um, if you want the motive, that's quite a long story. So I mean, you know, the, the motive is really around him trying to protect his brand and, and all that kind of thing. And that's quite a long uncle book of this thing, which takes okay. a while to talk about. But, but, just but if, to, I, if we move to the door... And yeah, we just get to, to answer the, uh, Nick, just to answer the question quickly. So Pete yeah. says, uh, you, you got to these conclusions. Um, yeah. And you, 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 you are now trying to explain to us why. Um, am yeah. I right? All right. You're talking about the door. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, you've got to ask why was, um, you know, the first bullet was bullet A. Why was that bullet shot uh, at hip level uh, and to Reva's right, right? So if you uh, if you imagine you, Reva, you're standing behind the door um, and you, you've got a cell phone in your hand, and that's the critical bit of information here, which is Oscar can't get to Reva because the door is locked. It's a barrier between them. And Reva's saying to him, you know, if you don't... Um, stop what you're doing, I'm going to call the police. And that is a, a, you know, that is basically going to extinguish his entire life if, if that happens. So he's kind of got to stop that call at all costs and he's, he's, he's trying to stop that call by, by breaking the door down, but he's not, he's not very, um, he's not very strong or not very effective on his stumps. And so he must run in order to, to stop the call from going through. He must run from the door, get get the gun under the bed, run back. And the moment he gets line of sight, uh, that's why you've got the sort of, that angle to the door. That's why he shoots her, um, you know, at, at, at hip level. He was actually shooting the phone. So to stop her from phoning, in other words, is what to you're saying. To stop her from phoning, yeah. Bit. So, like, 
Let's yeah, see what Pete says, Nick. Right, okay. but my, my, Nick, my point's here. How did you know? How could you say that she had a phone? We know for a fact afterwards it was established she had a phone in her hand. But uh, that's not enough for me to say definitely she wanted to phone the police. The possibility exists. It's still up to the judge to make a finding there. The possibility is that she did definitely was trying to phone somebody for help. But my main objective is why did she lock herself inside the, the toilet? For what purpose? She knows if she's been there before, she stayed over. I wouldn't go into a toilet and lock myself in. It was definitely straight to the point. I'm going to tell you the motive was, as far as I'm concerned, I, that's my opinion. Hold, hold on, before you give oh. us your motive, Pete. Because we recorded Pete's motive, what he says, because obviously you're saying Oscar is guilty. Premeditated murder is what you say. Yes, that's my uh, opinion. And, that's right. And that's your opinion? The complimentary breakfast.